Hello once again everyone. So, bonus video for you this week. Today I'm going to take a little bit of a look at carrying other weapons in your shield hand. So, I asked my guys on my Discord, hey, um, what kind of video do you want? And the one that people voted for the most was carrying other weapons along with your shield. So what do I mean when I say this? Well, oftentimes when you are carrying a shield, you still have enough grip to hold on to another weapon or another item, etc. I just wanted to go over some of the options that we see historically, that we've played around with in modern context, or that are just theorized, and some that are even a little more fantasy. Just to see what works, what doesn't, what I recommend, what I have personal experience with. So let's start out with um, my largest shield, my Rotella, and go from there. So firstly, it straps to my arm, which means that I can hold on to another object a lot easier. The downside, of course, being that it curves in a lot more. So unlike holding a center grip, I don't necessarily have as much ability to grab. So it's best to hold a small object. Obviously, it's quite easy for me to hold on to. For example, I've got my Bullock dagger here. I can hold on to a dagger or a similar sized weapon, no problem. Um, during the Hoplite experiment that I put up a video of um, earlier in the week, quite a few of us were carrying Xyphos. Um, we had some Xyphos from Purple Heart that were about yay long. Um, all of us carried it in a different way. Some people carried it in their shield hand. Some carried it on the uh, on their left side. These are the people I found that often lost it the most because it would slip out of their belt or they'd hit it with their shield. I personally wore it on my right side in the Roman way because I figured what other time to experiment with it and it never moved. It stayed exactly where I wanted it to, so you know, there's something for that. But quite a few of us decided to just carry it there. And certainly, if I hold onto the sheath, it's very easy for me to reach and draw it. Um, I can actually hold it either way. I could even hold it this way, so sort of a, um, almost like a cross draw style, where you would wear it here. So that option is certainly presented if I were carrying a smaller sword. If I grab a larger sword, so I have my 133 from Albion. Because of the way the shield goes, I'm really only holding on to it with my fingertips. If I lower it down, it's a little better. Um, I can still carry it, could still use it. It's a little awkward though. If I hold on to just the grip, it's a little bit looser, which is kind of unfortunate, but certainly I could carry on to it. The biggest difference here is that if I want to draw it, I now kind of can't because I'm holding onto the grip, which means I have to do this little bit of a transition thing. Versus if I'm holding on to the strong already, it's no problem, pull it out, ready to go. But holding another weapon isn't the only, whatever, isn't the only um, reason, you know, not, not just holding another offensive weapon. Another thing to consider is that when I hold on to this, it extends my defensive capability. So that's something I know as quite a few people, in my opinion, make the mistake of doing is whenever they look at a weapon, either pairing or modification, they always think in regards to offense, but quite often there is a defensive value. So at the moment, my shield gives me quite a lot of protection, right? Especially if I stand right foot forward, you don't really have a lot of targets. However, if I stand left foot forward and I have no armor on my left leg, you come from below, you will hit me. If I now have a weapon in this side, that extends my shield down quite a lot, as though I was uh, doing a guard manually. So, holding another weapon does sort of extend your shield. If you try to come around, you now have to get around my sword as well. It's just not as good of an option anymore. So, that is a defensive capability that holding another weapon, depending upon the length of your weapon, can have. Now, uh, another option, of course, that you will see, um, specifically with the center grip shields um, of the Dark Ages, is the idea of holding sometimes even multiple axes um, rather than having them in your belt. I've just got them all in my hand here. Throw, grab my other one. Um, when I pick up the center grip shield again in a moment, I'll show you how to do that again, but certainly it works even with a shield of this size. And you could even hide it, which is fun. But, so the Rotella. Quite a few options. Certainly I could even probably attach a sheath onto the inside of it. I don't know of any um, historical examples of that. 
apart from kind of the lantern shield, which has blades literally spring-loaded into it, but it's certainly not something you couldn't do. It's just a question of it, does it make the most sense to do that. So that's the Rotella. Let's move on to a different type of shield. Um, one that actually I haven't shown off on the channel before, I don't think, which is my Ecrunch. So what is an Ecrunch? An Ecrunch is um, usually the shield that you'll depict your heraldry on. Um, you will see sometimes heater shield shapes, or you'll see this shape. It is still a shield that would be used in combat. Uh, mostly you see it in jousting, because what you do with this guy is he's not just held, though you can do that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I've got quite a complex strap system back here. So this guy goes around my neck, my forearm goes through this, and then I can go through here to grab onto some rain. So I'll put it on and show you what I mean. So this hangs rather comfortably and I can adjust it to make it higher or lower. I then slip my arm through, through, and it's sort of held naturally right there. The straps are pretty loose right now, so it's not exactly where I would want it, but it's attached to my arm as one solid piece. I can grab onto reins and it would be sitting up here. I can of course use my lance rest and it's quite comfy. Now, I have seen some people wear this in one-on-one -on -one harness or even uh, multiple person scenarios, specifically if they don't have a pauldron, and it certainly does the trick. I mean, if I adjust it a little bit here, so it's a bit tighter. Come on, leather. There we go. Now it's sitting a lot higher. Um, it's protecting a lot of that opening, so it's very easy for me to, without having to raise my arm up very much, guard that opening. Um, so. That option's there. I have seen, like I said, people experiment with it. Can I hold another weapon? Not really. I can hold onto reins. I can do utilitarian things. I can, for example, if I was using a spear, ugh, I can obviously couch the way it was meant to, but I can also hold onto it this way. Um, so my normal sort of spear fighting is unimpeded. You will also see in the Gladiatoria effect book um, two guys who are holding a crunches, but they're holding them like bucklers, so they've got, they're just holding onto it like this and fighting out here. So you do see that done, and we'll talk about that again in a moment. But that's the crunch. Now, talking about bucklers. This is sort of the standard buckler shape you'll see. Sometimes it'll be all metal, sometimes it'll be wood with an iron boss, but with this guy, I have quite a bit more freedom to grab onto things. So as you see, it does not have quite as much of a dome shape, which means more of my hand can grab onto something. I can even hold this whole spear quite comfortably. Um, no real difficulty there. Now, I've seen a couple different ideas here and there. Um, first and most obvious would be obviously pairing a buckler with a longer weapon. So for example, I'm at the moment holding onto the spear no difficulty whatsoever, kind of guards my front hand a little bit. Um, and certainly in Partisan and Rotella fighting, there are some actions where you will grab hold of the spear as well. If I was a skirmisher and I had a javelin or something along those lines, or even was going to throw this and then use this, that option is there. Um, I don't necessarily know of any, well, I know of one depiction where a long pole is used in the offhand to parry, and that's Fiore when he talks about, um, I believe it's the, he goes over dagger versus longsword, and then he goes also over um, like club, essentially, and a walking stick against it, and he does use it to parry in this manner. So certainly that would work. Uh, would I want to reliably do it? No, because it's going to get caught on stuff, but in the moment, certainly it'll, it'll do what it needs to do. Um, now another thing I've seen has been and I, I get asked about this a lot. I don't know of any historical examples. If you do, please tell me. But I have seen some depictions of, well, some theoretical depictions. They come from uh, actually a mod for Attila, which brings it up to the medieval age, so Attila to the war. And some of their Huskarls are presented where they're carrying a Danax. I don't have a Danax. Go ahead and start my Danax fund. But they're holding a buckler in the other hand. Now, certainly, I can cut with comfort, use an axe no problem like this. It doesn't impede me. Was it done historically? I have no idea. Um, certainly could work, doesn't really hurt me. It's just an idea. Um, other more likely pairings that you will see, and one we do actually see, is going to be um, 
the Tallhofer depiction where he is fighting two people at once. So let me grab the Tallhofer buckler. So this guy is one of the bucklers we see depicted in a Tallhofer manuscript. There are two distinct designs that you see. Uh, this one and then the other one has more spikes and looks kind of... This is the Batman buckler as we call it. That one's more like the vampire buckler. But um, I haven't talked about this shape before. It's quite advantageous. Um, I find with this buckler, rather than having to kind of actively place it places, this just sort of covers and does what it's going to do, which might be a reason that uh, Tallhofer's buckler depictions is kind of just held somewhere oftentimes. Specifically, these little guys right here catch a lot more than you'd expect. But in his two-on-one uh, example, the guy in the middle is holding a dagger um, and I think it's even specifically a Bollock Jagger in his buckler hand. And like we talked about before, that just slightly extends things. Could you use it to attack? Sure. That's not a whole lot of blade. Um, you see this talked about a lot when it comes to, for example, Dirk and Targ. The idea of having the Dirk in the hand so it, one, defensively it does extend your Targ, but using it as an offensive thing. In the moment, yeah, sure. But also in the moment, I find that most people by default will strike with the buckler instead, um, instead of using that. Not saying you couldn't train yourself to do it, just that if you're in that desperate of a situation, maybe hitting them with the thing that's going to cause them to react a bit more isn't the worst idea, but that's just my speculation. Um, but we do see this combo used, and certainly it works just fine. However, important note, how comfortable that is depends upon the size of your, uh, your dagger. So my rondel here, while it's longer, and certainly gives me a lot more protection, it is also much chunkier in the handle, so that's not quite as comfortable for me to do, even with my big hands, so. Now this rundle also, I think, is a little bit oversized in regards to its handle, but still, it will depend on a weapon-by-weapon -weapon basis as to what works for you. Now, last thing I want to talk about in regards to weapon pairings, if you will, and things being held in the other hand is daggers of the Renaissance. So I have my parrying dagger here at the moment. I like a simpler parrying dagger design, so I just have a ring, no uh, protection through it or anything, short crossbar, and it's a relatively short dagger overall. This is my personal preference. Um, other people prefer other things. But you do start to see more complicated uh, mangosh is often the, the term given to them, which is where you have a sort of a sail type look. So it is, you know, a full handguard here. That protects a lot more, and having fought a lot of them, it is a pain to get around. Um, however, that's not the only thing you see. Sometimes you'll even see it held um, reverse grip. Whether or not that was done historically, I cannot confirm. Probably was, but I have heard some people speculate, oh, you know, you could hold it reverse, and now this sort of serves like a buckler, and then you also have the dagger to it. I've played around with it. Certainly, yeah, it does kind of work, and depending upon the weapon you're carrying, it even sometimes makes sense, so now we get on to the fun one, which I really wish I had an example of, um, which is the alehouse dagger. So if you've never heard of an alehouse dagger, what an alehouse dagger essentially is, is it's usually about yay long, and was incredibly popular amongst the English, um, specifically around George Silver's time, so we're talking Shakespeare era or so. And why it got its name is because pretty much everybody had one, um, all the rough and tumble types, that is. It was an iron-basketed small sword, essentially. Um, could be good for cutting, could be good for thrusting, and they do, the one source we have on it, which I believe is silver and then some other like anecdotes here and there, does specifically mention striking with the, uh, with the basket. So really it's better to think of it like a boxing glove with a knife on it. And so that kind of combines the idea of me using the buckler and the dagger in the same hand. So it does kind of eventually evolve together and then disappear again. All that is to say, essentially, that you do have some options. What you're limited by is the shape of your shield, what you're trying to accomplish, and what situation you're in. Um, play around with things. This is one of those situations where even when you're trying to stay as true to history as you can, probably somebody did it at some point. I mean, if we can come up with it now, somebody probably came up with it historically. The question then becomes the context of, does it make sense to do all the time? Would it be something you do situationally, etc. So, 
hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight as to um, using weapons in your buckler hand. And we'll talk about some other things another time.